How's it going today everybody? Uh, the project I have on the go in the garage is a uh, Honda uh, HR2, HRS 216 uh, mower. I just picked this guy up for uh, free. Someone was giving it away so I don't know anything about it as of yet. Uh, it definitely has a self propel and uh, I'm just going to take you through and see if this guy is a survivor or we're gonna have to part it out all right guys so what I'm gonna do first is go through a function test and uh, see if it will fire up so uh, trying this uh, throttle up here is not working not allowing me to go to a joke but um, I'm gonna try and pull it over anyways So as you saw, we got nothing out of this guy. Sorry, I should have uh, uh, showed you. I did uh, the one thing I did test earlier, check earlier, that it actually has some fuel in it. I'm sure it's from last year. And uh, check the oil. not a lot of oil so if I get this thing to start I'm not gonna leave it running for very long and uh, since it didn't start um, I'm going to see air filter eh, not in the greatest shape but and uh, in here is where your choke Inside here is where your choke valve is and it is wide open. So that throttle cable is not uh, Working so I can't close off the choke. So what I'm gonna have to do is uh, Prime it With the choke open, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of Primer fuel in there and uh, we'll see if we get a couple puffs out of it Well guys, that is promising, and uh, that just means we got spark and compression, and it will run. I just think it needs probably some fresh fuel and uh, carb clean, and uh, hopefully we can get this guy back on the road, cutting, doing its thing, mowing. Alright guys, so I got you up on the bench here, or on my uh, lawnmower uh, table. This 310 mil. <clears throat> All right. So now with these Hondas and Kohlers and stuff like that, there's a bunch of gaskets you really got to watch out for. And try not to uh, destroy them. Maybe you get a chance to reuse them. Everything is kind of sticky here. So there's a little gasket on there. That one looks like it's in good shape. Here's a breather tube, which uh, hooks up to the back of the air filter housing. Now there is a gasket on the back side of this as well that's starting to come off. I'm not sure if that it looks like it's yeah it looks like that backside gasket might be damaged all 
All right, so there's a whole bunch of linkages here now. So we got to actually get all the linkages off. So there's a Z-bend on this one and a Z-bend on that one right here. And then there's a return spring or a tensioner spring as well. So, and then the fuel line is on the bottom here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try and get this fuel line off first. Uh, uh, this is going to probably leak a little bit, so I'll uh, try and capture as much of that as I can. So once you get the fuel line off, you actually have a little bit more play and rotation to be able to get rid of these Z-bends, um, or get these Z-bends off, I should say. So I'm going to get the Z-bend off in the back first. There we go. Then it'll allow me to manipulate the front one and then this little tension spring here comes off and there's our carburetor. So we have a, a little insulator plate in the back and then a, another gasket. Um, this one's a metal one. And then in between those is probably sandwiched another gasket, so we're probably going to be replacing some of these gaskets. So I'm going to move you over onto my bench here and uh, we're going to clean this carburetor. Alright, so we're up on my bench here. I'm just going to gingerly try and remove some of this, these gaskets. So that one looks good. Save that one. All right. <clears throat> so I'm anxious to kind of see what this uh, inside of this float bowl looks like. Should be a 10 mil, yeah, 10 mil uh, bolt on the bottom. Oh, there's definitely some water in there. I can see that already. guys so that's not very nice so there's some sediment some water some dirt and all this is going to cause it to uh, not run properly was in the bottom of the curb. Alright, so float pin. Float and uh, needle. Just going to look at the condition of the needle here. That looks pretty good actually. Thing with the rubber part this has a rubber tip I always put that aside because uh, if I'm spraying carb cleaner that stuff uh, erodes the rubber uh, tip on the uh, needle just checking to see if there's any fuel inside this float and it's uh, good no fuel in there so uh, in here we've got a main jet and an emulsion tube so you need yourself a screwdriver like this, which has no flared ends on it. So you can fit it in there. There's a brass uh, flat head to the top of the uh, 
main jet. And you want to be very careful when you're taking that out because you can strip that flat head very easily with the soft brass. Sometimes these things are very finicky to try and get out. Um, like it's screwed out all the way um, from the threads, but still doesn't want to come out sometimes. All right guys, so I almost got it out. Oh, there it is now. Yeah, I just basically kept whacking it as I was turning it like that. And, uh, and there's your main jet. This is the culprit a lot of times. There's a hole that goes down through the center of that jet that you have to make sure is nice and clean. And here's your emulsion tube. And uh, it's got a couple of tiny holes in it as well. So you wanna make sure that all that is cleared out. All right, and then uh, basically all I'm going to do next is uh, I'll take out the uh, the uh, idle screw here. So how it's set up here, how this uh, idle uh, this adjusts your idle speed, but since the mowers typically don't idle, uh, although this one does have a throttle control, uh, so it might idle. Uh, you can set the idle speed here and as you twist this in you can see slowly this is actually moving the shaft all right so basically the, how they had it set up was uh, the shaft will only turn so far uh, right now like I can't turn it past that point so they had it so that it was actually uh, putting slight pressure on this uh, butterfly valve here for your throttle. So that's where I'm going to put it back when I actually reinstall it. There we go. I'll take this idle screw out. Now this isn't a jet, it's just a screw that um, covers up and uh, there's a tiny jet in there that's not, uh, you can't get it out so you just spray some carb cleaner in, into that, all that, uh, into that passageway. So all I'm going to do now is just, I'm just going to spray all this, uh, all the outside first. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to take a paintbrush and some dirty fuel. Uh, well, some good used fuel, I should say. And, uh, and just kind of get the outside of this cleaned up a little bit first. I'm actually going to put this uh, screw in a couple turns to prevent any of that gunk going back into that idle circuit. So I'll just clean all this out and then I'll blow it off. Um, and then I'm going to spray some carb cleaner in all the, all the passageways of this carburetor on both sides. And then down in here and here, uh, down through the um, emulsion tube or the pickup tube here. And then blow it all out with air and then I'll come back. Alright guys, so I sprayed this all down, or I uh, uh, cleaned this all off with a uh, paintbrush and some good uh, gas, and uh, it looks a lot better now. I'm just going to uh, make sure that my passageways are nice and clear. This one is definitely clogged up a little bit. I mean, I can see a little bit of light through there, but... So, uh, I got all sorts of little t tools and doohickeys here in, in my little carb kit. So you just want to make sure that that passageway is definitely uh, a lot cleaner now. And then on this guy, there's all sorts of little holes, different sizes. Just want to make sure this is just a bread tie. 
stripped back a little bit. And then there's some tinier ones up there, which uh, I got a smaller bread tie for that. Just use my small bread tie to get in there. Okay, well, this is actually too big. So, one step down then. I got a little piece of uh, wire brush uh, that I actually put into the end of a matchstick. It's really nice and fine. And that guy goes right through. All little tips I've learned from other others on YouTube, basically, as well. All right, so I'll just spray these with a little bit of carb cleaner, and uh, they'll be will be good to go. Put it back together. All right, guys, for the inside of this bowl, I'm just going to use some steel wool. Now I'm not going to do that anywhere in and around where I've been working, because um, there's a little small little fibers that are going to come off and then contaminate my workspace. So I'll just clean this out with some steel wool, and uh, I'll come back after I. Get that all cleaned up and we'll put her back together. All right guys, so we're ready to reassemble everything. I got the uh, bowl as clean as I could get it. So um, now to put all the parts back together. So first I'm gonna do is put this emulsion tube in first. Then the main jet. And you don't want to tighten this down too much, guys, because you'll strip the flat head on the top. And when you go, if you ever have to go and do this again, you'll you won't get that out. You're going to be buying a new carburetor. Okay, so next we'll have the uh, needle valve. This goes on like, nope, not like that. <laughs> Just kind of goes on like so. And the float pin. There we go. Now I'm going to test this uh, float, uh, this needle and seat. I do have a video on how I do that. Um, you can click up on the uh, link there in the top right corner now. So I'm going to take care of that, make sure that this uh, needle is seating properly before I put it all back together and on the machine. So uh, I'll be back in just a sec. All right, guys, so uh, the needle is uh, seating properly on there, so I just like to confirm that that's done before I go and put it back together and then have to take it off the machine again. Now, float bowl, it doesn't much matter how you put the float bowl on, but I like to put it on so that uh, the uh, drain plug actually points out. Uh, and off to the side just a little bit so it just gives easier access without having to take the whole thing apart to drain the fuel if you want. If it's pointed towards the back where the actual engine is, it's going to be useless anyways there. Alright, so that's good. Uh, next is going to be the idle, the uh, screw. Okay, and then the actual idle adjustment screw, and like I said, I'm just going to put this as, hold this as far as it will go, and then screw this in until it starts pushing up against, against this little piece right here. Okay. Okay, and it's just starting to move it now. Good. 
Alright, so this is ready to go back on. 